Vulnerability inevitably leads to pain and suffering, hurt, anger, all of these, these feelings from time and time again. Intentionally or not, our partners have the power to hurt us. Good morning. I couldn't agree more with Vulnerability Ted. I'll put the link in the description. It's an awesome piece of information, an awesome idea that oh, so relevant to most relationships. And the idea is being vulnerable to your partner is essential for a intimate relationship. You cannot have deep intimacy without deep vulnerability. They go together as a package, inseparable. It gained tremendous popularity when, uh, when it first appeared. It was along the lines of a revelation of a researcher who used the research to distance herself from, from getting emotionally involved and getting vulnerable and also was taught inside her family to be strong and tough and not show emotion. And she came to the unique realization that vulnerability is essential. Not only in relationships, mind you, it is essential in other sorts of relationships that are not necessarily romantic, erotic, uh, towards children, towards family, towards friends, towards business partners, alliances, you name it. Much mutual vulnerability is an essential part of it. Uncomfortable though it may be. Gave rise to the idea inside my head that inside a healthy long-term relationship there must be negative feelings along with positive ones because feeling vulnerable is uncomfortable unpleasant downright terrifying for some people i hate feeling vulnerable and i assume some of you also hate it but it's necessary and also it's it's angry because my fiance has the power all of a sudden to hurt me quite a lot because I've made myself vulnerable towards her. I don't like that. But then how else could I experience deep intimacy if I do not show myself for who I truly am? If I do not share my true feelings, thoughts, emotions? And this runs a, bit, uh, runs a bit counter to how real men are, how culture teaches men to be currently, which is don't show emotion, don't show vulnerability, because that is akin to death. But it's not just the prerogative or the problem of men who do not want to be vulnerable in relationships. I don't think anybody enjoys particularly the vulnerability aspect, but I do think we tremendously enjoy the deep intimacy aspect. Except, of course, if you're in an abusive relationship. If your partner is abusive, most abusers use emotional vulnerability as a weapon against you. And the more vulnerable you make yourself, the more you expose yourself to suffering. And abusers do not do the same in return. They do not make themselves usually emotionally available, uh, the real their real thoughts and feelings. Actually, they make a lot of efforts to obfuscate their real thoughts and feelings. They thrive on confusion and you not knowing what they really think and they really feel. Potentially keeping your emotions to yourself and not making yourself vulnerable is probably a good course of action. Depends on the situation. Vulnerability inevitably leads to pain and suffering, hurt, anger, all of these, these feelings from time and time again. Intentionally or not, our partners have the power to hurt us. And if we've been in a relationship that has ended, and perhaps I've been hurt, the tendency is to armor up. I do not want to make myself vulnerable again. I do not want to hurt again. But the realization is that I do not choose to live my life in fear and le let the pain that was necessary in, uh, in, because of vulnerability to rule my thoughts. I prefer to take the chance with the next relationship 
and keep making myself available, keep making myself vulnerable because that is how I choose to live. That is my understanding that if I really want deep intimacy with a person, which I, if I really want to build the strongest, healthiest, most fulfilling relationship that I can, negative feelings are a part of that. Vulnerability, pain, anger are a part of it. Vulnerability, Ted. Couldn't agree more. Wiser words have never been spoken.